Semaglutide, aka Ozempic, aka Wagovi, has been found in a new study to be linked to a very rare eye condition that can potentially cause blindness. And this is very much all over the news. So, let's talk about it. The study is fresh off the press and was published in the JAMA Ophthalmology Journal by Hathaway and Friends. And what they found in this retrospective matched cohort study is that there is an association between semaglutide and this rare eye condition called non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And, and don't worry, the shorthand is NAION for short. So what a retrospective match cohort study means is that the authors went back in time and looked through a number of patient charts. And they compared individuals that were on or exposed to semaglutide to those that were not and were using semaglutide or being treated for diabetes or obesity. They then matched individuals in each group so that we got similar characteristics between the two groups. So they looked at people's ages, their sex, their medical conditions, and those sorts of things matched them up so that we could make a comparison between people exposed and not exposed. And then they looked at the number of people in each group that developed this NAI on condition. Now, a bit of a sad statistic for you and that 80% of you that are currently watching this video are not subscribed to my channel. So if you're enjoying this content, which I know you are, you should definitely hit that subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications so you never miss out when I put out another video about side effects and other newsworthy things that are going with anti-obesity medications, but you can also help to make me feel really, really good about myself. So go down below, hit that subscribe button, and thank you very much for the ongoing support. What the authors found in this study is that individuals that had type 2 diabetes and were exposed to semaglutide we're at a 4.3 times greater risk of developing this NAI on condition. And the individuals that were being treated with semaglutide for obesity had a 7.6 times greater chance of developing this NAI on condition. Now, those numbers definitely sound a little bit scary, and don't worry, we're gonna put all of this into context for you. And for a better visual representation, I've created this lovely little forest plot here that shows the points, the data point that I've mentioned above, but also has the air bars present as well, so you can get a better perspective as to what it actually looks like on a graph. You see, the air bars represent our confidence interval. So we're 95% confident that the data point that the authors calculated for this study falls somewhere along the lines that are listed there. Okay, so what exactly does all of this mean? Are you gonna develop this very rare eye condition by taking Wagovi or Ozempic? Well, first off, we need to look at the study itself. Was it a good quality study and can we trust these results? Overall, in terms of observational trials, this study was not too badly done. The authors did a couple of different analyses, they did their best to mitigate any bias and confounders and stuff like that. So overall, they tried to limit the amount of bias and things that were going to affect the results that they found. So it was a good quality study. However, it was not perfect. And problem number one with this study is that it was an observational trial. So the authors went back in time, they observed the data from a number of individuals, and then they drew their conclusions based on the number of people in each group that were developing this eye condition. So the authors weren't able to control for all of the potential confounding variables, and therefore we can't directly say that yes, semaglutide does cause this condition. All we can say is that there seems to be an association, but there's a lot of other things that may have gone on that could have affected or caused these results to occur. And when we look at the randomized controlled trials, which have been done with hundreds of thousands of individuals up to this point in time, where all of the variables are being controlled, with the exception being people are just given either the drug or a placebo, what we have found is that no one has presented with this very rare eye condition. So what we can take from that is that if this eye condition is indeed occurring, it is occurring at a very, very low rate, so much so that it's not being detected amongst thousands of hundreds of thousands of individuals, at this point in time. Problem number two that we have here is that when we actually go back to the data itself, and here's that lovely little forest plot that I created for you, you can see that there's the little dot there, but the error bars or the confidence interval around those point estimates are very, very large. So that gives us a very wide range of where the true value of what the risk is with semaglutide and this eye condition 
potentially falls along this line. So with the group that had obesity, that was the longest line. It either is a very, very small risk or it's a very, very large risk. And so we have a lot of uncertainty. There's a lack of precision in this result. And ultimately that lowers our confidence in the value that we can take away from the result that was found. Now, problem number three is that when it comes to this non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, try and say that five times fast, we actually know very, very little about this condition. First, it's extremely rare. It's only occurring in about two to 10 cases per 100,000 people each year. Expressed as a percent, the incidence rate is about 0.002 to 0.01%. Further, we're not even sure what the exact mechanism of action is. How does this condition occur? People are saying it's an eye stroke, but technically it's not that either because there's not a clot developing there's not anything blocking the blood flow. What we do think is occurring is that there's a lack of perfusion, which could be due to certain medications causing a drop in blood pressure. It could be someone having low blood pressure overnight. There's multiple different things that could lead to a lower level of blood pressure and ultimately reducing the perfusion to the optic nerve and that could lead to the condition. As well, we think there's a number of conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea. These sorts of things could all potentially be contributing to this condition and be risk factors for it, but there may be also just general risk factors that we don't know about or it could just be largely being driven by genetics. And hey, if you want some additional support in managing your weight, or maybe you have some questions about your specific situation, whatever the case may be, you can book a consultation with myself by going to the links down below. As well, if you wanna book a more substantial coaching one-on-one -on -one aspect of things, go to my email down below. You can send me an email, we can get hooked up, and we can see if we can provide you some ongoing coaching to not only manage your weight now, but forever and into the future. Everything you need is down below, so be sure to check it out. Probably Problem number four with this study is that if we assume individuals that have diabetes, obesity, sleep apnea, and that sort of thing are at a higher risk of developing this eye condition, then those individuals within those groups that are sicker, so they have more uncontrolled diabetes, they've had it for a longer duration, they have a higher BMI, they have worse sleep apnea, they're gonna be at the greatest risk of developing this rare eye condition. Further, what we know from the medications and how our clinicians work and stuff like that based on our guidelines is that those sicker individuals are also going to be more likely prescribed Ozempic and Wagovi for managing their conditions. And unfortunately, in this study, the the authors didn't control for disease severity. So they didn't control for A1C numbers, so how high an individual's blood sugars were, how long they've had the disease for, how high their BMI was. They didn't control for any of these factors, which are gonna be absolutely crucial if these conditions are risk factors for developing this eye condition. So was it actually the drug or was it just that sicker individuals happened to be on these medications and were already at a higher risk and were going to develop the eye condition anyways? The authors also made a note that it seems to be within the first year of starting semaglutide that people are at the highest risk of developing this rare eye condition. But again, could it be that beyond the first year, people are just starting the medication, they're just starting to get better, starting to treat that underlying disease and after that first year they've got better control of their diabetes their weight has come down and ultimately that has lowered their risk from the disease perspective of developing the condition so again is it the disease or is it the medication a lot of big questions and we really don't have the answers at this point in time. So are you gonna go blind by taking Wagovi or Ozempic? In short, I would say no. Now we can't discount the results of this study. It was well done and it was done by some very smart near ophthalmologists. However, we need a lot more data before we can really draw any kind of conclusions. And again, when we look at the more robust randomized controlled trials, which have been done over a long period of time with thousands upon thousands of people and everything is being controlled, well, we haven't seen this condition pop up yet. So, again, I'm leaning towards probably not going to be an issue, but we need more data and time will ultimately tell. So that is it and that is all you beautiful people. I hope you enjoyed this video and of course, if you did, be sure to hit that share button and send it over to anybody that you think might get some value from it. As well, if you haven't hit that subscribe button down below, be sure to do it now and don't forget to turn on those notifications so you never miss out when I put out another video. As well, sign up for the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel today. 
you'll not only get to support one of your favorite creators, but you will also get a monthly live with myself where I talk about a variety of topics that don't show up on my regular feed. And I also do a live Q and A and answer all of the questions and concerns that you might have in real time. As well, don't forget to check me out on my other channels. I'm on the Tick, the Talk, the Gram, you name it, we are out there. So be sure to give me a follow on all of those other channels. And as I always sign off, and until next week, don't forget that it's always those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.